Hi friends, it's Coco and I am in a new place recording Coco's Corner. I'm actually, <laughs> I am legit chilling in my recliner in the living room. My twins are asleep. I can hear the lullaby, I can hear the lullaby, <laughs> I can hear the lullaby playing uh, in the background and I thought, dude, now or never. And I just gave my pep, myself a pep talk earlier in the week about working out. Sometimes you got to be your own mama. I've often said about how I can be a procrastinator. I'm also down the dumps, man. Uh, I just, I hate depression. Ugh. And as a person who suffers with it, like you know all the things, right? You feel it coming and then you just sit in it. So um, I am getting out of it. So I, in recording this podcast, is getting out of it. So hi, here it is in the raw and the real. I'm also going to share a conversation uh, from the dinner table last night that's a part of uh, mental health that we're also going to be uh, recording a podcast on the Beachy Mama. So this is all kind of going together, kind of like a goulash friend. We, we are cleaning out the refrigerator of thoughts. <laughs> we are going to uh, blend it all together and make a really nice meal that we are going to enjoy together, if that makes sense. Um, I got COVID. Ugh. I uh, got COVID for my 41st birthday, and that ish sucked and sucked the life out of me. Um, I didn't, I, listen, <laughs> when I found out I was positive, I was like, you're joking, but I just felt so freaking sick like sick, sick. Um, we, I went, my mom was here. We went to the beach that afternoon. Like I even posted on Facebook, the little hack that I do to take water out. We, or if I run out of ice, I use frozen strawberries. Like I was sharing, doing all the things, felt great, fine. Came home from the beach. Uh, we ate lunch. I took a shower, the twins napped. And then, you know, I just like laid down. When I woke up from that nap, I was like, oh Lord, something is very wrong. <laughs> like what has happened? I was just shivering. I was rolled up in the bed, like underneath a bunch of blankets. And I text my husband, like from the fetal position, like come home, I'm sick. Like something's not right. Uh, I never thought COVID until 24 hours later, I still felt the same and thought, bruh, no, like, should we? So uh, of course, Jason comes in and not of course, Jason comes in and uh, we take the test. Oh, of course I record it. Duh. That's what I meant. Of course I film it. And I got attacked on TikTok because he wasn't wearing a mask. Well, hi. I don't know. We've been together for like already five days. I don't know. Like I just, I didn't, I don't know. We, we live together. I, I, <laughs> ugh. So, um, but you know, you post anything online, you get attacked. Anyways. I didn't know. So, um, he, we took the test and like within seconds, like it popped fast positive and then a complete panic. You can see that complete meltdown on TikTok, Coco underscore on the radio. I did not handle it well. Uh, my anxiety went through the roof, which is something that we're going to be talking about on the podcast for the Beachy Mamas of, uh, just, you know, being responsible well, we're just going to talk about it tomorrow. Um, so, yes. Uh, I, so, I did not handle it well at all whatsoever. I quarantined for about four days. Um, and then that weekend, my husband was going to go visit his mom to go to get the kids out of the house. And Jason's like, well, I'm going to test before I go to my mom's. And he comes into the room because, hi, I'm so quarantining. And he's like, I'm positive. Q panic attack number 42 at this moment. And I am like freaking out. And he's like, I'm fine. He had zero symptoms. So um, he carried on with his life by, and by that, hold on, chill. Okay. Uh, masked up, but he wasn't really going anywhere. He had some things to do and he was with the twins. Uh, so he took them to the park like every day and then just was home. Uh, so yeah, that was our life for 14 days. It was wild. And then I just got into a depression. Um, that's just something that I'm dealing with. I stopped seeing my counselor. I know, I know, I know. Uh, it was $125 to, 
to go, man. Uh, and that's a lot. Um, for 30 minutes, it was $75. Um, and yes, I have been to other uh, counseling here in town. The appointments are six to eight weeks in between. Uh, it, it, it's just, it's difficult, uh, which we're going to talk about uh, in this conversation that I had on the dinner or at the dinner table with my husband uh, last night. So this is just a, a conversation, raw and real, uh, that I just wanted to share and I didn't know I was going to capture what we did capture. I think it's important that you hear from, and I'm just going to use this loosely, a content creator. Do I think I'm a content creator? Yeah, but I'm not a fake one. I, I share all of it in between the, the being vulnerable, the, those hard moments. And life has been hard and it's been hard for a lot of people. And a lot of people feel like they are alone in this conversation. And, um, you know, we're not. Uh, there's so many of us. So how do we all get on the same page to to not feel alone, to feel like we can reach out? And those are things that I'm working on too. So um, here's me coming up from COVID. Again, I feel like the phoenix rising from the ashes for the 9,000th time, but um, that's okay, right? Uh, that's okay. So thanks for riding along, riding along, being a part of Coco's Corner. Thanks for listening. Uh, hopefully you've missed it as much as I have. And uh, welcome to uh, conversations at the dinner table with my husband. You're also going to hear uh, kiddos in the background. Uh, we just got done doing, oh, this was a fun, if you're looking for dinner ideas, uh, we did build your own tacos at the dinner table with the twins and they loved it. Uh, and it was fun. So I just had like taco meat, all of it was in Tupperware because it was easy, taco meat, uh, refried beans, cheese. Um, and tostadas and little mini flour tortillas. So freaking easy. So it was right after this, twins were playing in the playroom and Jason and I are chatting. And, I, and I'm so curious to know what you think about uh, this part of Coco's Corner, just recording it from the dinner table. Always hidden. So anyway, I was talking with Lynn and she's getting over COVID. Well, she's negative now, but I was like, well, how are you feeling? And she says, well, I'm just exhausted and, you know, you know, still kind of feel like you're in a funk. And I was like, my wife said the same thing. And then she goes, and then just trying to come down of all the anxiety of me being in this room for two weeks yep. and Eric having to do everything. And I was like, well, that's what I was telling Eric because he was trying to juggle work and kids events and this and that and I was like I get it like I understand it 100% I'll work around your schedule but it's just the way that moms are thinking in terms of oh my god Jason's out there with the kids by himself and I'm yep. in here need, sick and I can't help yeah, so what am I going to be no doing no relaxing everybody's yeah. like oh just sleep the first three or four days 100% yeah. I was just but then as you're still trying to recoup you're not resting because no. you're worried about what's going on here. Every little noise, every little crash, every little boom, every little scream, every well, that little... and just everything else. Like, mm -hmm. how, are, how are you going to get to work? Are you able to get to work? And everybody's like, well, at least you have a husband who can juggle it all. Well, that doesn't make you feel any better. Right. I'm like, great. I'm glad because I should have a partner that's able to do that. It doesn't make it yeah. feel any easier. So Liz and I were just like... Well, and then we were she, talking about that, and that led into the other thing. Was talking about, like, affirmations and this and that. And I was like, I hear all the time, you know, oh, you're a you know, great juggler, and you can do all these things. And, you know, and people say those comments, and I'm like, yeah, I'm just doing my job. And her husband, Eric, is the same way, where it's like, everybody wants to praise, you. you know, oh, you because know... Because there's guys who do not get up in the middle of the night to change a dirty diaper. Which is insane. Okay, so that's yeah. why when people are like, what, your husband? Yeah, yeah. he did. I, I did it. It wasn't a... Well, you were making milk. Right, but it wasn't like a... It, it wasn't it a wasn't question. A, it was right, just a it thing. wasn't something that you even needed to be discussed or and, talked about. It yeah. was like, get... I don't know. It was like, you're going to... I don't know. It's just... Well, it was... And that's where it's like, I guess, to me and then her husband, Eric, it's just like, well, this is the way it should be. But then there's other people that... And it's sad to me that the way it should be isn't the way it is for so many people, and marriages, you know, women, whatever. And I have seen that on TikTok. 
Which where is, so many women are finding their voice and they are saying these things like, I was sick as a dog, but nobody was here to help me. Well, and that's what I was saying. I was on like, me and only me and on me. I told her, you know, I was like my wife and knocked her on her butt. And so she was down and I said, and honestly, thank God I had zero symptoms. Because right. I was no, able. Sure. And I think the whole time I was like, any day the shoe's going to drop. That's yeah, like yeah, any kind of waiting. sniffle cough. I'm like, oh, here it comes. Here it comes. Yeah. Oh, we are so screwed. <laughs> giving you more anxiety the exactly. whole time. And then I told my, that's why I was sharing like just on social media is that I know the cycle, like the minute that I feel like completely out of control, it's done. I've given up. We're completely done. I've checked out. It's over. And it's just me and a mom and all the things. And, uh, uh, it's so Liz different. Felt the exact same it, way, and so like we want to talk about this. Yeah. Well, and for men, and like hearing from other people is you know that are good guys. You know what I mean? The guys that do step up and do what they're supposed to do. For us, like the mom guilt that you carry, that you guys carry and put on yourselves, like we can't comprehend it. It just doesn't make sense to because to us, you guys are amazing. You're yeah. doing checking all the boxes. You're kicking ass. You're you're doing all the things, and so it's like you have this internal mom guilt and worry and fear that 100%. we just don't have. And that's what Lynn was saying. She's like because that mama bear, we need to take care of our children no matter what. So any little threat or any little thing is now world ending, world yeah. changing because we go in protector mode. And I was like, well, that's funny that you say that because for men, we're, yeah, in, pro- we're in provider mode. So if you're not, fe- well, at least for me, if you're not feeling like you're secure and that any little thing and you start feeling insecure and, you know, just finances in general, then it, to me, it's like, I'm not doing enough providing. So that, oh. and that's just, I would guess that would be the, the dad guilt. Okay. Okay. You know? Like, I don't have... I see what you're saying. That that would be, I guess, our version of it. But it's so small compared to your guys's... Yeah. We have a lot of boxes. Yeah. A lot I have, of buckets. We have one. Maybe two. Well, for our situation. So, before anybody tries to come at us, it's like, but... But it, it, it's just interesting to, to hear that... Well, good. I'm glad that Lynn also feels like that. Yeah. Makes me feel less great. And also for you to understand like what it feels like to, it's hard for me to explain that. Well, and that's, that's where it was good. Like it was really a good conversation with her because she was like, no, absolutely. And she was saying, you know, it's just like the thing half and half. You know what I mean? Like hearing these things, and it's just so many similarities, but you're hearing it from a different voice right. that isn't the one that's always there. Mm-hmm. You know, like you, it's it's different, a different perspective of the same thing in a way. But it was, and and to know, yeah, we're not the only ones. Mm-hmm. You know. And it's just women suffer in silence. Yeah, when well, so she said crazy. that same thing, she was like, "Women don't talk." And she goes, and but then I'm you the go. <laughs> then I told her that. No. But she goes, and then you go on to these like mom support groups, and she said they're the most toxic place yes. in the world. This. And so that started the whole thing about like breastfeeding and how you didn't, you know, you were worried about with Levi because he wasn't latching. And then it was just this whole toxic thing about breastfeeding. And then it was like, no, you got to pull yourself back. She's like, it's insane. It really is. Which is something that I brought up with Liz, with, you know, the Coastal Bend Mom Collective. It's not that. She, she doesn't want any of that kind of stuff. And it's so wild that when these women want this community a community so bad they just trash each other I, and i just like to i just watch it from afar and be like why yeah. i just don't get it there's a lot of things that i've seen like in the coastal wind mom collective there's lots of moms that i don't agree with cool mm-hmm. you do you but i'm not gonna get on there and trash this lady yeah. for something that she how she wants to raise her family yeah. her kids and maybe that advice somebody's really going to want it or need, need it, it. Yeah. It's not mine. It's I'm different. cool with that. Well, you got to be mature and grown enough to say, 
you know, this is a good bit of advice. This is a good bit of advice. And it could be coming from the same person. Like, there's plenty of times when I talk with Vince about things, and I'm like, you know, that's a good bit of What's advice. What's wrong with your voice? <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I'm getting there. there. I think it's the... Uh, allergy stuff going on but anyhow uh like i talked to vince and i'm like that's a good bit of advice you know thanks for that yeah i'm not gonna do that one mm -hmm. you know because everybody's just very quick that doesn't to judge work for me. without context on social mm -hmm. media and they're quick to um be the best at everything and not point any fingers at themselves it's just it's vicious mm -hmm. so it's refreshing when you do meet a group of moms. That's why I love like Ray Dean and Alex right. and Iris and Rachel. Like it's so diverse. Mm -hmm. There's lots of things that I'm like, okay, girl. Or there's things that they're probably like, that chick is cray or like, mm -hmm. you know, whatever. Well, and the guys are we're us guys. We all get along great too. But, and yeah, and we've never had like a forced meeting. No, and I don't know. It's just I think just once you find your tribe, it's yeah. lens right the. Mom groups are just awful. Yeah. They're just so awful. So I think when and she said that she's like, what makes it even sadder, Jason, is that when it's when moms are out there and women in general and they're searching for help because we started talking about mental health and how it's just ridiculously hard to get any kind of real treatment and help. And she was like, you know, women go to these things that are desperate and they're looking for help. They're looking for advice. They're looking for answers. And then they're bashed and told there's this and that. And she's like, and that's what pushes these moms. You know, some, you know, it was a, a case in Massachusetts that she was telling me about, you know, kill the kids, kill herself. And she's like, they're on this edge. And then they're, they're suffering Again. in silence and not having the support. And they reach and do these things or try to some of them. And then it pushes. Yeah. And it's, it's just crazy to me. Instead of being like... It's factual. Yeah. It's scary. Yeah. It's a, a hundred per, It. That's why I said I'm thankful, you know, that I have a foundation. Mm -hmm. Like, it has been scary and like it has been dark and it has been horrific. And I want... It wasn't until I had kids that I understood how that Good could head. even happen. Because you are just... It... I can't even think about it because it's it's just it's yeah. awful. So, Lynn's right. It's true. Yeah. It's so true. Like we want to talk about all these hashtags about mental health matters. But when it comes down to it, it's a dollar. And if you don't have a dollar, you're screwed. Yeah. And I was like, we'll go over here and get help. Okay, we're all waiting for months to get in with these people. So in the meantime, what are we supposed to do? Yeah. Yeah. What is it? I, I don't know. Nobody does, you know, apparently. My counsel reached out to me, and I just said, look, you're expensive. We cannot afford it. I just That's a that's yeah. also a fact. And she's like, she gave me two local organizations. I'm like, they're months. Mm -hmm. Months. Or you're waiting six to eight weeks in between your appointments. For an hour and then six to eight weeks between those appointments. How is that consistent care? Yeah. And it was the same thing so. that Ruben was complaining about with him and his situation. And, like, he's like, yeah, so I talked to the counselor for an hour. Well, really 45 minutes. And then they... That's also facts. Like, it's they, not an hour-long mm -hmm. session. And then he goes, well, and then I'm not scheduled again for another six weeks. Dude, I deal with this every day. Yes. How do I go six weeks? And then yeah. when, when they do call back and then they want to talk about the same thing that we talked about six weeks ago. Yeah, there's that weird follow-up and they're like, uh... Yeah, yeah like I'm it's in a different a, place right now. Well, we hope moment. to be. Well, it's just like be, life. You know. It's a different day. But it's so, so... It's... I don't know. It's just like you're damned if you're doing, you're damned if you don't. It's like you're... Everybody's like, get help, get help, get help. And you're like, I want help. They're like, okay, well... Here's all this free help, and 50 other billion people also need free help, and I understand that. I I just, I don't, I mean, well, I think that's why when the phone rings and I see it's one of my girlfriends, I just pick it up. It's like I could be doing 50 other things, but like if I know something's going on with the girlfriend, like oh, she's yeah. calling me for a reason. Yeah. It's not like, oh, it's a butt dial or... You know, I see so many people talk about that too on social media. Like they hate talking on the phone. Well, I hate reading your text messages all damn day long. Yeah, call me. 
Yeah, like there's just, we also forget like the person behind the text. Like we just, oh, she's good. She's great. She, yeah, I don't know. Well, it's how just, many times can somebody in a text message say I'm good, but then when you talk to that person, man, I'm good. Yep. Context. Are, are you sure? Relationship, where are you at? Mm -hmm. Well, that, like when we were, when I was on the rigs and we were like, no, nah, this is a, a talk conversation, mm -hmm. you know, being gone like that, you know? Yeah. So we had that advantage to know like some things don't, you can't hear. I also think that where you're at, you're like when somebody says just, Hey, I'm there for you. Then you also have to be the one to pick to like also to send a text or to make the call too. Mm -hmm. You know, so that you you have to also be willing to say like, all right, I'm tired of sitting in the phone myself, and I, like I can just text Ashley and be like, bro, yeah. I don't feel right, and she's like, what do you need me to do to help you do? You know, yeah. she's immediately like, you know, I don't know, maybe X, Y, and Z, or so. I think just there's just there's a lot of growth and also standing in stagnant water at the same time does that make sense it's like you're trying to go and like do these things but you're just kind of stuck in like this funk at the same time mm -hmm. like you're just waiting in it as you're waiting in it does that make sense i'm seeing your analogy like like you like you have these tools and you're trying to do these things but you're still just kind of stuck like in this mm -hmm. sour ass funk Mm -hmm. Of like, well, how do I completely get out of this? Yeah. I don't know, maybe you don't ever really get out of completely a funk. It's just, you're just hopping on different rafts. That's a good way to put it. You know, because I think it's, we, any kind of hang up, whether, you know, like when we talk about addictions, you know, like addictions don't go away. They may change into something else, but you're always alcoholics. Anybody that you talk to that's recovering that's alcoholic, it's a they're trigger. recovering mm -hmm. for the rest of their life. Mm -hmm. And so they know things that do that. And I think it's like identifying Counselor those things. did say that now that you, now, I don't know, you just said it like that, like addiction and alcoholism. You know, because I got some I, friends on Facebook, they, you know, they're celebrating, you know, I'm uh, 283 days sober. Man, that's freaking awesome. Well, I don't know how to celebrate not having a panic and anxiety attack when it's all, every single day of just spinning out of control and the guilt. That's what I mean. Yeah. Is like, it's it's just, a different thing, but uh, the, my, my point is, is like, it may never sure, go sure, sure, away, sure, sure. but identifying, redirecting. Like I know from, and I'll speak for myself right now. Like, you know, when I was younger, I struggled with depression really bad, right? And we know this and I'm not gonna get into all that. But even to this day, there's moments where I'm like, yeah, I gotta redirect this. Cause I can feel myself, like you say, you feel yourself going into this, you know, dark place or rabbit hole or whatever, how you ever wanna say it. Like I recognize, all right, I'm getting down. And I, I, I actively redirect whether in a lot of times it doesn't for me at this point because this is 20 years removed i'm good you know to a place good enough where i'd say all right i'm talking to abraham or i'm gonna do this or i know i turn on you know music that i know helps bring you know brighten me up mm -hmm. and i even express to that you know when i think about things that have happened you know professionally that sucked and that we went through and i kind of not today, Satan, and change it. I think that's what's frustrating too is when I let that shit win. Yeah. Well, it's like when he said not today, Satan, I'm like, I didn't even say and then I, But then it's just so far, I'm just so down into that thing, which I've also just been learning about myself. I, I, this is just so crazy, but on TikTok, man, the amount of people just sharing how they're like discovering who they are, like all these things, and I'm like, I think I've had so much undiagnosed things just my whole life I was just doing and didn't mm -hmm. really think anything about it mm -hmm. that some of those are really good strong points but I, there's something when I had kids it broke the effing mold like it broke something to where all those things that I used to do were good and now it's just what the hell yeah. like it's just it's like there's so many little just, little cracks in the dam and then when you have happens. a major the kids, life man, change just, event. But they don't talk about, they don't talk about 
Oh, and we were talking about the ch- hormone. freaking major shift that happens of like, what the F am I even doing anymore? And I think that's what it is. It's just a constant, I'm in fight or fight 24 seven all the time, which I mean, the kids came, something happened. We talked to Liz about this, but another thing that Liz was, Liz, or Lynn, Liz, Lynn, what Lynn was saying this morning is like that when you become a mom and it's like a identity crisis that you guys go through. 100%. Also, and I'm she, quitting my job and doing this. There's a huge identity crisis in that too. There is a 100% when you become a mom. Yeah. And so now 100%. she's like, and as our kids are getting older... And they're that's starting true. to do their own thing. She's like, now what do I do? Who am I? And that's what she was saying. She's like, so now maybe I can try to do this thing that I've been wanting to do that I never really had a chance. And a lot of people do that. And, and, and I believe that and that makes sense. So good for Lynn that's going to pick up and do something that she mm-hmm. finds passion, a hobby. So mom did. Mom's like, bye. Yeah. She went traveling. Like, like yeah, we did stuff as a kid, but yeah. that's what you're supposed to do. Like, I, you... I think that once you've done that job, like, yes, yeah. go and do and be. And I hope that Lynn can find out, you know what that is. I'm ready to be a lazy ass mom and do nothing. Like, I'm ready. <laughs> okay. I see hey. Hey, Tired. Yeah. What's up, bud? Ooh. Tell me where you got that Play Doh from. Oh. Oh, okay. You're lucky that there was a thing of play doh behind the couch because I thought you got into the play doh, so you're lucky that you found the play doh. Oh, you did? Okay, sis. We got, they got play doh hidden in the spot. That's funny. Other thing, they don't tell you the baby shower. Don't ever buy your kid play doh. That's a mm. fact. Well, I think I'm going to use this for my podcast because I haven't recorded anything in a long time. So thanks for joining me. Oh. Uh, Coco's Corner live from the dinner table. Peace. <laughs>